China is truly a vast and fascinating country. 90, 600,000 square kilometers of land, 3 million square kilometers of seas. And it's never still, changing with the rotation of the seasons. To fly like a bird is to see things that are beyond your imagination. before have dreamed of. And even familiar places when you look down on them from on high will assume a completely different appearance. nature and geography, humanity and history. This 50 minute air journey will bring you the amazing experience you've never had before. From now on, join us as we embark on a unique journey across the sky. Taiwan Island is the largest island in China. Together with many islands around it, it lies on the continental shelf along the southeast coast of China. To the east lies the vast Pacific Ocean. To the west, a shallow strait separates it from Fujian province. In this journey, we will fly across the Taiwan Strait to explore a long celebrated archipelago. Following in the footsteps of Chinese ancestors, Let's participate in an ancient ceremony continued for over 300 years. A strait is a passage between two bodies of water. Taiwan Strait connecting two warm seas of China. The East and the South China Sea It's narrow in the north and wide in the south. The width in the north is about 200 kilometers, while that in the south nearly doubled. So the time taken to fly across the strait in the south is always a little longer than people think. After an hour's flight, an archipelago lying on the sea is coming into sight. Fifteen thousand years ago, Taiwan Strait has not been submerged by the sea. It was like this shoal sitting above the water here, connecting the mainland and islands along the southeast coast. A succession of volcanic eruptions and crustal movements have created these small islands. consists of 64 islands, of which 19 are inhabited. Those people from Fujian who have first settled here called it Pinghu in Hokkien. And gradually, it has evolved into the name we know today, Penghu Bay. Along a narrow island is the tenderest arm on the sea. On the outside of it, the seas churn with surging waves. Yet within the bay, water is smooth as glass, lying on the waterway of Western Pacific Ocean. From the age of exploration, here has become a safe and reliable harbor for those passing ships. No homing drunk setting, only a sea blue. Thanks to this campus folk for half a century, 
people who have never been here before can still describe easily what Penghu Bay looks like. The heart-shaped necklaces in the water are a special design for fishing by local fishermen. Once upon a time, people used with what they had constructing stone walls from volcanic rocks. Designing gated opening based on the current directions of the tide to trap the fish inside the stone walls. And now they have become a featured tourist attraction. They retain the fish and also the tourists. Everything was enveloped in the romance here. Over 40 kilometer to the east of the Penghu Islands lies the largest island of China, Taiwan Island. On this ancient waterway, people would often come across several ancient warships. Every spring and summer, local people will put on the armor of ancient soldiers, hold up colorful flags, and parade through the streets. These traditional activities are held in memory of Zheng Chenggong, Over 300 years ago, he landed here. With an army of 25,000 sailors, he successively expelled Dutch colonists and recovered Taiwan Island. Chicken Tower was built when Taiwan was under Dutch colonial rule. After Zheng Chenggong recovered Taiwan, it was renovated by several generations. Now it is featured by Chinese traditional red tiles and cornices. And now it has authentic Chinese appearance. Standing proudly on the land of its own country, it reminds people of what Zheng Chenggong has written in his letter to the Dutch governor appealing to them to surrender. Taiwan is China's territory. This is the first. Since then, a systematic education system began to spread throughout the entirety of Taiwan. People from both sides of the strait not only worship the same teacher, but also share the same tradition. In Pingdong County, this grand ship, which took three years to bullet, is nearing completion. Everyone will drop their work and send it off. It is said that taking the ship to the sea and burning it will ward off disasters and diseases and bring good luck. Although it is built out of bamboo and paper, the king's ship crafted to the scale of a real ship is often over two stories high and weighs thousands of pounds. Fortunately, there is strength in numbers, 
A procession of tens of thousands of people turns the inevitably difficult land sailing into a lively and grand event. The tradition of burning king ships has lasted for over 300 years. This used to be a custom brought by people living along Fujian coastal line. And now, it has become a way of relieving homesickness for people who have left their homes. When the king ship reaches the coast, it will be set ablaze jointly by the people. The huge flames light up the night sky, illuminating the serene strait. Everyone is praying for calamities to dissipate. And for joy and peace to prevail. This is an ever-changing island following a plant as it reaches upwards, challenging the heights. We'll plunge into the sea and join the dolphins to reminisce the encounter with the island and witness how nature constantly reshapes the land. And finally, we'll head to the volcanic group, looking for traces of its fiery past. Central mountain range, with its main peak rising 3,825 meters above sea level, is the longest mountain range traversing Taiwan Island. Because of this, it becomes the watershed of the island, splitting the entire island into the smaller east and the larger west. central mountain range, there are often breathtaking sceneries. Yushan juniper grows thick and tall in lower places. But they insist on ascending to challenge the heights. 3,500 meters is not high enough. They want to go higher. Their trunks twist with the wind, conserving moisture. Amidst scorching sun, strong winds, and high altitude chill carved out these extraordinary shapes. Plants' endurance is beyond imagination when it comes to their survival. In fact, Yushan juniper is a species that came from afar. Taiwan Island was connected to the mainland. The seeds crossed mountains and ridges and took root right here. Later, the seawater flooded the land they had come. This place turned into an island, and the mainland between the homeland they gaze upon daily. east of Taiwan, ocean currents from the equator convey its warmth all year long. People, drawn by fame, advance towards the depths of the ocean. Because here, over 27 species of whales and dolphins are vacationing here. If you're lucky enough, you can encounter them. Unfortunately, luck isn't on our side this time. Whales didn't come. But the hospitable dolphins would never let people down.
Long before the dolphins made their appearance, this cliff has already been standing here. At its steepest point, it's nearly vertical, plunging straight down into the Pacific Ocean's edge. It used to be a rock in the deep sea. Preparing long ago for this moment's visage, readying itself well in advance. Thanks to the crustal movements 250 million years ago, it first took shape and finally broke through the sea's surface. This cliff had stopped the passers-by. Until more than 140 years ago, Fujian's military commander who stationed here and the Taiwan governor in Fujian province together with local people have built the first road on the cliff. After that, coastal roads were constructed successively. After continuous repair and reconstruction, and even name-changing today, it is acclaimed throughout Taiwan as the most beautiful coastal highway. of crustal movements can be seen clearly. Taiwan Island is located in the most active seismic belt in the world, the Circum-Pacific Seismic Belt. Irresistible forces affect the island at every moment. Earthquakes cause displacements in the mountains while streams follow the fissures carving out new paths. At an altitude of 1,815 meters on Ali Mountain, it converged into a new lake. The flooded trees gradually withered, and in combination with the lake, they unexpectedly form an enchanting secret realm. harbors a wealth of forest resources. But most of the trees we see now are mostly not over 70 years old. During the Japanese colonial period, the whole primary forest on Ali Mountain has been clear cut. It wasn't until 1945 that Taiwan, its affiliated islands and the Penghu Islands rejoined the embrace of the motherland, and the 30 years of relentless logging and deforestation finally came to an end. At present, people would replant new trees annually at the right time, hoping for the restoration of the forest. Earthquakes, storms, ocean waves, and human activities have been constantly modifying the appearance of the island. However, the most imaginative stylists on the island are the 20-some volcanoes. Sulfur vapor from the cracks reminds people of its once surging creative force it possessed. After an earth-shattering volcanic eruption, the earth had been boiled for over two million years. And now, there are still some volcanoes dormant in the deep sea waiting to be remembered by the world again. Volcanoes on land lack 
such ambition. They became approachable and can even be observed close by. The top of these giant mushrooms used to be the marine life of 20 million years ago. Calcified tuberculosis from their demise was even harder than the rocks beneath. Sea winds and waves reshaped their appearance constantly. Some even look like a human. During our next trip, we would come across an old train heading to a gold coast worthy of the name. On the evening of family reunion, we'll join the dazzling lantern show. Flying along the eastern coastline, we come across an old and slow speed train. to the Hualien Railway Cultural Park where it will be exhibited. There was a railway on Taiwan Island a long time ago. From 1887 to 1891, the first governor dispatched to Taiwan in Qing Dynasty Liu Mingchuan took Taipei as the center and built the first railway in Taiwan, which connected Keelung and Xinchu. It is the precursor to the northern section of the main line. In end of the 19th century, when people were building the iron bridge for the railway, some workers discovered placer gold in the river. Following the traces of the placer gold, people found the gold vein. Subsequently, gold prospectors flocked here and the area once buzzed with prosperity. Between the mine and the coastline, there are many towns like this one, which was originally built by gold prospectors. As the gold rush came to an end, these towns gradually quieted down. Tourism has become the new gold mine here. When the gold rush was full-blown, due to the crowds, the town streets became very congested. So the local residents punched through passageways from house to house, linking every street and alleyway. Looking down from high above, the small town looks complicated as a maze. When all the lights are ablaze, people always return to that golden mountain in their memories. Lights at night carry a richer flavor of memories in Kaohsiung. On Taiwan Island, Lantern Festival is more anticipated than Spring Festival. Family reunion dinner, Tang Yuan, lantern riddles and lantern show should all be enjoyed during the festival. On this day each year, families on both sides of the strait reunite to celebrate the festival together. And at this moment of each year, the moon rises over the sea. We share this moment at the ends of the earth.
Wandering the streets of Taipei in the drizzle, we are revisiting the birthplace of the city. Under the old banyan trees, you can hear the sound of home. Lastly, we'll visit the tallest building in Taipei. Not far off, we'll find the most densely populated region on Taiwan Island, Taipei. It is encircled by a ring of mountains. The monsoons coming and going from east to west carry moisture over the mountains. Without haste and by a stroke of luck, descend into the basin. Consequently, in Taipei, rain falls at least half the days of the year. The prolonged rainy climate hasn't made the locals uncomfortable. Instead, it has contributed to their unique rhythm of life. Enjoy a cup of coffee. Have some fish balls. Every street offers over a hundred leisurely ways to take shelter from the rain. But speaking of rainy days, nothing warms you up better than a cup of bubble tea. Topped off with the Tianjin onion crepes, now that's the perfect match. And remember to ask for double eggs. The history of this temple dates back over a hundred years before Taipei's. In ancient times, the harbour behind the temple served as a vital aquatic transport route, where trade flourished. Many people in Fujian across the strait have also come here and settled down. People brought the deities from their hometowns here. Diverse deities were all settled into the same temple. gathered together under one roof in peace and harmony. Along with the people who came to the island came an endless array of customs and traditions. The inexhaustible flavors of hometown dishes, along with the unforgettable dialects from back home. near Longshan Temple. This narrow street, nearly three meters wide, harbors the memories of the city's growth. The walls of the buildings in different periods preserve the century-long transformations of the old street. From the red bricks on Fujian Guangdong architectural style, to the three-dimensional Baroque reliefs, and onto the white cement walls gradually stained by rain. Every plant and tree alongside the old street chronicles the passage of time. As well as the lives of the very first arrivals, who from this street as their starting point, pioneered what would become today's Taipei generation after generation. In downtown Taipei where land prices are high, there lies a stretch of concrete bungalows. Today, they stand unoccupied. Green vines crawl all over the houses. Gone are the hustle and bustle of days past.
village, a tall building has become the landmark of Taipei. Having soft soil and frequent earthquakes and typhoons, in Taipei, skyscrapers are a rare sight. However, Taipei 101 building is an exception. On the sixth floor between the 87th and 92nd floors of the building, a massive damper is installed, weighing 660 tons, capable of absorbing shocks from a magnitude 7 earthquake and the severe turbulence of typhoons above a level 17. Following in the footsteps of those living by the water, we are going to find the Sun Moon Lake from childhood memories and uncover the partnership between rivers and the sea with birds. and barren mudstone prevents settling, nor can it be cultivated for farming. Because of such a unique style, people call this uninhabited place the Moon World. This place shuts its door to nearly all creatures, except the thorny bamboo that has strong tolerance to heat drought and barrenness. Like the thorny bamboo, people living on the island are also trying to adapt to the environment here. In Tainan area, where rainfall is plentiful but the terrain is steep, even abundant rainwater is hard to retain. In 1930, Ushantu Reservoir was completed. Its other end connects to a spiderweb-like network of intricate water supply routes. These water will flow through main canal's branch lines and ends of the canals to every farmland that is short of water. In Chinese mainland, even eight-year-old pupils know Sun Moon Lake. Because the article of Sun Moon Lake was included in the second grade elementary language textbook. The text describes Sun Lake and Moon Lake, one to the north, one to the south, resembling the sun and the crescent moon so closely Indeed, when the water level was low, the sun and the moon were discernible. Later, in order to meet the increasing demand for water, people introduced water from Choshui River. And the water area of Sun Moon Lake has increased by 70%, which shaped it into its current form like a maple leaf. But this does not stop the tourists from going there to find the fairyland in their childhood. Not far from the Sun Moon Lake, together with many other rivers, Choshui River has deposited vast tracts of fertile land, enabling people here to cultivate rice that is renowned worldwide. The rice fields of Tainan Plain follow a highly efficient triannual cropping cycle. Only the rice harvester can keep up with this growing speed.
During the harvest season, there are always some little ones trailing behind, reaping the benefits without the work. On our next trip, we will journey along the boundary between land and sea to visit a small island that predicts the weather following Mazu on a parade around the island. At the end of the trip, we will explore a few islands not far away. Volcanoes and oceans have been contending along the coastal mountain range for 20 million years. Layers of lava accumulated and under the relentless erosion and washing by the sea. They solidified into colossal staircases. Ascending the steps, each stride represents hundreds of thousands of years. hold no life. However, sediments carried by mountain rivers carve out slender plains on the shore terrace day after day. So people began to build houses, terraces, and roads on the land sea boundary, creating households amidst the mountains and the sea. facing lower soils, but inevitably facing the vast ocean. Because compared to the weather forecast on TV, people put more trust in this big turtle on the sea. Turtle Island is 10 kilometers away from the east coast of Taiwan Island, It is a young, active volcano. Whenever a heavy rain approaches, an abundance of atmospheric moisture due to the temperature difference forms a cloud cap atop the mountain. Seeing this hat, people will know when the rain will come. Turtle Island not only plays a pragmatic role, it's also quite adept at romance. Sulfur gas is constantly emitted from the seabed near the island. The transformation of the seawater into a well-delimited milk sea. adds endless joy to the experience of sea play for visitors.
Besides the sea miracle, an unprecedented parade is about to begin on the sea land boundary. What kind of deity steps out to a send off by millions? For more than 200 years, every year in the third lunar month during the Mazu pilgrimage, the Tachia temple is crowded with people. At the same time, a celebration of equal grandeur honoring Mazu is also being held along the coast of Fujian province across the strait. Nowadays, people from both sides of the strait connect through live webcasts meeting in the cloud to collectively celebrate the birthday of this over 1,000-year-old Chinese sea goddess. The parading vehicles are carefully decorated to resemble the appearance of the traditional Chinese cornices. circle the island to pray for blessings, for good weather prosperous families and all things going well. satisfies people's demands of romance. Elwambi Lighthouse has been standing on this coral reef for more than 140 years. When the night falls, the L1B lighthouse shines the strongest light on the island. Guiding ships that travel far and wide so they can always find their way home. islands scattered around Taiwan Island, among which Orchid Island is a remote one. However, people are still willing to go there in search of the pristine island exist only in their dream. Under these large black roofs are semi-underground houses constructed to withstand strong winds. A planked boat with steep sides to bow and stern is a special boat made for fishing. People here have been living with the sea for thousands of years. As time passed, their way of life has also became a unique scene on the island. As night falls, a spectacular light show will be on, which is caused by ocean microorganisms called Noctiluca scintillans colliding with each other. The coastline transforms into a vast galaxy. Under the sparkling starlight, let's travel through the night to the last spot of our trip, Kinman Island. From high above, Kinman Island lies isolated on the sea. It is less than 10 kilom from the mainland, 
but over 200 kilometers from Taiwan Island. Its proximity to the mainland is its unique advantage. In the past, water shortage here seriously affected the life of local residents. People had been looking for opportunities to draw abundant water supplies from the mainland. Finally, in 2018, an undersea pipeline started delivering water to Kinmen from the coastal city of Jinjiang in Fujian province. It has alleviated the water shortage faced by over 10,000 residents on the island. Being one family, sharing the water of the same river. The distance between the mainland and Taiwan has always been this close. We have the same old red brick houses, speak the same Hokkien, and share the same language, and the same ancestors. Despite its small size, Kinmen Island has a broad perspective. Gazing upon the mainland, it lingers and beholds. With a glance, it glimpses the shallow strait's embrace. And often, it yearns for a distant view of Taiwan's grace. Radiant gleams shimmer in its eyes, so bright for everywhere it looks, it sees the same China's light 